300 games. Can you honestly believe you're here? Uh, yeah, no, I can now. I still remember, like, as a young person, I remember coming out here to training with you and the Cats start of 2007 season, back end of 2006. I was in the AFL Academy and that was sort of first experience at an AFL club. That to me is like still fresh yeah. in my mind. So it, it does feel like it's gone super quick, but like it's been nice to actually take stock this week because very rarely do you ever reflect. And it's been nice to do that this week. Can I take you really quickly back to being drafted? Having to move, pack up, head to yep. Adelaide. You also made the decision, along with your family, to keep yep. in school here and yep. stay back here. Just that you would have been desperate to go, oh, I just want to play AFL footy. But you also needed to finish year 12. Yeah, and I wasn't ready to, I wasn't ready to leave home as a 17 year old. I really wasn't. Um, but I didn't want to take the chance of, because you never know it's a surety. Looking back, you could probably go, well, yeah, you could play 12 months and it'd be fine. But this way, it locked in, yep, I'll be drafted. So you, you achieve that thing that you always want to achieve as, young, as a young player. Um, and then finish school and then do it the year after. But then I played in round 20 or round 21, and it was the most surreal experience ever, going to school that week, you know, three kilometers that way, driving up to the team hotel Friday night, and then playing against Essendon at, um, whatever it was called then, it's Marvel Stadium now. Um, but that feels like it was, you know, yesterday. And all of a sudden, here we are 15 years later. <laughs> I, I was going through, in preparation for this, the, the list of accolades. Uh, I mean, the, the obvious ones, the Brownlow Medal and the eight All-Australians and the All-Australian captain and all of that. But then, even statistically, um, almost number one in, ever in contested possessions and inside 50s and all of these remarkable stats. And you come across as such a confident guy, and I mean that in, in, in a really positive way. But throughout that time, you would have had massive insecurities at times, like, am I actually good? Can I actually do this? Can I change clubs and have an impact with a new club? Yeah, and like, you still get that. The knock-on disposal, which is like, it's fair, but like, there's always, you'll never play a game that's fully perfect. There's no career that's totally perfect. And I've always been one in everything in life to focus on like the good stuff. You know, what people can do rather than what they can't do. And, and you take the, the criticism and the things that you need to work on, absolutely. But then you get back pretty quickly to focusing on what you do well. And I think if you do that, then you're gonna enjoy whatever you're doing a lot more. Like that's, that's my message for our George's Oz kick on a Saturday, Sunday morning, you know. Focus on the good stuff that you do well first, and then we'll work on the RFIs. But if you have that sort of mentality and view, I feel like it's a fun place to be around the footy club. Um, so I think attitude, as much as anything, is an integral part of being successful. I've heard you talk about that often, that so many people talk about, oh, fix your weaknesses, fix your weaknesses. You talk about, well, no, do the things that you're good at really, really well. Yeah, and, and definitely like acknowledge, yep, got to try and improve those things and always always working to improve but you know never um, never go away from your one word because that's the thing that you can always return to and it can give you great positivity and you know reaffirm that you're good at what you do and you can keep doing what you do and do you just feed off all this we're down in front of the stand right now but a packed MCG a packed GMHBA stadium it just seems to feed what you do, is that right? Yeah, well it's why you play, like, and if COVID's taught us anything over the, the past few years, it's like the backbone of the enjoyment of the game is the crowd and the supporters that we get. We broke the um, membership record during the week, like, you've experienced that, like there's nothing like playing in front of, you know, our home crowd and there's just, they've got us over the the line a few times this year where we haven't been going that well but they've just spurred us on and it's it's it is really why you play 300 games this week so as you said you've reflected a little bit and that's been exciting but as the, you then build into a huge september do you allow yourself time to to reflect too much or is it i can see something pretty exciting ahead and i want that yeah i, I don't i'm i've never really reflected too much at all so this week a little bit but I'm also a bit of a dreamer, so I can't help but not, you know, 
look to those things and think about yourself in that position and what it might be like and you've obviously experienced it and you know all the people that I know having spoken to about it it's nothing like it so I don't think there's anything wrong with picturing yourself in that situation and we give ourselves a chance and have given ourselves a chance this year to, to give it a red hot crack and I, I, you know a small thing about it. it's great it's, it's why you do it. Now the big question about the game against the Eagles is how much of that entire stand has been blocked out for the Moggs Creek crew? Yeah, there's a few dangerous fields. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it works well because the BFL season's just about wrapped up, so um, I think there'll be a few in the house, which is nice. That must be special. Coming, you made the move from the Crows back to here, but the fact you can play in front of yeah. people who absolutely adore you, Geelong fans, but also so many family too. Yeah, and they have a few mates that I played literally junior footy with and you know, came through junior ranks with, they'll be here, and just to be able to share that and, um, you know, reminisce from an under 12 at Anglesey to, to playing in front of literally the home crowd here uh, is really special. And it, it's, you know, the journey is so special because of the people that, you know, are involved in your own life and in your own career, and, and that's what the, the great memories are of that. So that's why it's been nice. Well, enjoy the game. Congratulations. Thanks, Andrew Huge milestone. Thanks, Mark. Well done, Mark.